Alrighty, so this is probably like my final tier list I think I'm going to do uh, on here on this channel. So let's enjoy it while, we ha while we're here, right? <laughs> Thank you for being here with me on this journey. I went back to go watch every single Godzilla movie there is. I mean, I've already done that, but I am going to G-Fest this year. So I wanted to just redo that because I'm going with people who haven't seen it. And so I wanted to guide them along this journey. So we finished the, I never know how to pronounce it, Raiwa, Rira, Reba McIntyre. So I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, Raiwa, Riowa, anyways. Raiwa, we'll go with that the term tonight. I could, yeah, anyway. I finished that era and there was debate of what is in this era. According to the Godzilla guy, he does include Monsterverse in this era. So I just decided to just make it easy and I'm putting all like, pretty much 2014 and onward content i even put in some of the shows just because like we live in a society now where shows are somewhat important and they tie into the lore so it makes things complicated anyways so we're gonna start this party off godzilla 2014 now as a godzilla fan when final wars came out and we had the 10-year dry spell it was a hard, dark time with all those fake Godzilla trailers and stuff and stuff but when 2014 was announced I was like oh my gosh like this is crazy this is absolutely wild that this is coming out so with that said I just remember being like I, I can't, literally cannot believe that this is is, is a thing when the one 2014 dropped with that said um I will say how did I feel about 2014 I've watched it so many times um the best way to watch it is in like the like Blu-ray 4K or whatever, where they actually you can actually see <laughs> you can actually see Godzilla. But I remember that wasn't an issue of how dark it was. But overall, I enjoyed it. Very nostalgic for me to have watched that. So for me, I think I'm putting that at like I'll put it a solid A. You know, it was kind of a smaller scale movie. You know, there wasn't anything too crazy about it. But other than that, it, it was um that's really about it. Uh, my only gripe about it was Brian Cranston was not utilized as much. Uh, he dies, spoiler, right, 30 minutes into the movie. So that's kind of was a shame. But judging from what I, I heard, it was uh, because he had, you know, I think it was scheduling issues with um, like Breaking Bad. That's why he couldn't be in it as much. So it's unfortunate. So I'm doing the MonsterVerse first just to kind of get out of the way. Skull Island. Skull Island. Skull Island's a good movie. Like it's it's a, like you debated whether you want to consider it a Godzilla movie. I mean, Godzilla does make a slight, like, reference to the end, so I guess we could include it in this era. But, I mean, I, I really like Skull Island, and I, I think I think it deserves S-tier. Just uh, what it what it accomplished. Uh, we had Samuel Snell Jackson. You know, we had Brie Larson, Loki. Uh, so, you know, we had the entire Marvel cast was pretty much there at that point. You know, we had uh, Sully in, in that movie. There are, there are a lot of things I like about Skull Island. And I think it's just... Also, I love the Vietnam, like... You know, Black Sabbath playing. <laughs> when they're, like, bombing. That is That was, like, one of the coolest scenes ever. And then I remember being excited for the end credits scene. Like, oh, they're actually teasing the Godzilla and, 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 and Kong returning for their final... Their, their next duel, you know. I remember as a kid watching the Showa era. Godzilla versus Kong. King Kong. So, so that was just kind of very exciting for me as a fan. Just to be like, oh, oh they're actually, like, teasing this up, you know. So that, that, that was great for me. I was just like, oh, my gosh. So... One thing I forgot to remind the, the audience here, this is bias tier list. So I'm not basing these off like, oh, like this and that. No, this is based off like how I felt about it. And so because of that, I might get some flack for this. But I, I uh, actually, I'm putting you S tier. No, I actually think I'd put it A tier. I would put it S tier, mm -hmm. but honestly, out of all the MonsterVerse movies, before Godzilla X Kong, I think this one was my favorite. And the reason why, like I like Godzilla vs. Kong, but like, I remember, like, this is the one that I remember. I went to the theater, and I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, this is, like, everything I dreamed for as, like, a Godzilla fan. Like, I felt like a kid. I remember I remember, I saw that movie twice in one day. I saw it first in, like, the IMAX 3D. That was insane, you know? And then I saw it again later that day in IMAX with, like, with some friends. And I just remember being so happy that I, I got to see King Ghidorah, Rodan, Mothra in, a, in an American version in... The way they did those the creatures was was amazing. Like Moth Mothra, beautiful queen there. Ghidorah was like 
terrifying like super terrifying rodan his design is like just incredible and like how they gave him like kind of like he shoots little embers of fire as he like flies that is just like one of the coolest things ever and i remember i've rewatched this movie several times going back rewatching it oh yeah the human parts they are pretty like you know up until that point in the history of Godzilla, we it was kind of a common thing of like, oh, whatever, we don't care about the humans, it's all about the monsters. Because it's funny, because like in 2014, they were like, there's too many, there's too many, uh, there's too many, there's too many, there's not enough Godzilla. And this one, there's too much Godzilla. So can't please everybody, right? But for me, just like seeing those iconic monsters, and like it was pretty much a remake of Ghidorah, the three-headed monster, just about. And then the 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 cover of uh, Godzilla with the surge from System of Down was one of the most wildest things ever so that was pretty cool cut two we have godzilla versus kong so i think a lot of these are going up for a tier and i think that's because of high recent bias rewatch just rewatching these mm, 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 mm. you know i have really a and yeah i'm putting it a i mean i i enjoy this movie it was it was a great movie i loved the pace of it it was the first movie i remember seeing after the like pandemic like when theaters started kind of opening back up a little bit and it, i think it was one of the first I remember it being like the movie that kind of brought theaters back after COVID because like so many people, and I remember there's a lot of memes about it and I still see memes about this to this day. Now, I don't know. It's just because I'm within the Godzilla loop, you know, so that could be one of the reasons, but I remember like this movie was a thing and just to be able to see it in theaters, like, especially after like being locked up for so, for so long, just be actually go to a theater, go to IMAX and see that that was fun. And also the fact that like we had Megazilla, Megazilla is like one of my favorite kaijus, you know, I, cause like growing up watching Godzilla versus Megazilla, like the original was like very, I rewatched that movie. So that's probably the one I rewatched so much as a kid was that one so and i loved i love the monster versus megazilla design i love his little grabby little arms i love his little snout he has i love when they're in there like that's a that's a robot guys are like no that's a mecha guy that's like it's so corny i it's just it was an overall fun brawl of a movie and godzilla and kong godzilla got really feral in this movie but you know what i'm talking about where you really got feral godzilla x kong now this one i was so hyped for this movie because like i just coming off the high of like minus one i was like man i'm getting like two godzilla movies within like the same few months that's like that's absolutely crazy you know it it, it was just oh man s tier i put that I, I loved this movie it was so fun it definitely brought me back to like most of these movies straight up like from like godzilla king of the monsters onward i cried in the theater watching these movies because like there was so much nostalgia attached for me it reminded me like i saw an interview of like voice actors like it was like jim cummings and like rob, rob paulson you know like the animaniacs like they talked about how like whenever you they speak in their um their their cartoon voices it makes people cry because like they get hit with the nostalgia of like being a kid again and for me it's like that with godzilla like i just like i godzilla x con i got thrown back into like being a kid again like sitting down in my living room with my toys and watching these movies and godzilla x con really like and, and the whole reason i started making content more about like the stuff i like watching was because godzilla x con like i and i i gave a lot of significance to this movie it was so fun i had such a fun day watching that movie i went with my family i even was able to get the poster like the the the, the, off the theater, theater manager he like oh i had i had a bunch of extra and i got my first movie poster it's like hanging outside my room so when people walk in my house they're like there there it is you know and so i i had so much fun it was a crazy movie i re i, I think i saw that movie like four times in theaters is it, it was i saw it in like imax i saw it in like the the deep box you know or the mood seas i saw it in like the panor panoramic you know version of it i saw it in like imax d box 3d whatever you know like it was a great movie it was just it's, it was just a fun blockbuster you know and that's all i can describe it as nothing more nothing less so down to some of the shows skull island i'll be <laughs> we're down to the more like commoner ones i just remember skull island was like I, I watched it just for the lore uh crummies that's really about it it was fun uh it kind of gave me the vibes of like camp crustaceous so g give me so do what you feel with that information it was a little more violent and so yeah i mean it was okay I, there were par the parts i liked about it were when kong was there but he wasn't really there a lot and you kind of just learn how like man kong's been through a lot so that was like kind of like the part about i like about it when you see like kong it's just like he's going through it man like he's had a lot of people come and go in his life that 
he doesn't seem to get his happiness. Although now with Godzilla Kong, he finds like you know some family there, so that's gonna be great. Monarch, Monarch, Legacy of Monsters. I'm gonna put you at a at a B. I enjoyed Monarch. There are things about it, I, you know, I wasn't a huge fan of the uh, modern storyline. The the uh, older storyline was. I think the the peak of it, you know, with a uh, you know with Kurt Russell, that's his name, Kurt Russell, and his son Wyatt. Kurt Russell, I loved, I loved his character, great character. But this is his his performing cast. They did okay. Uh, the the one part of the modern era that I enjoyed the most was the fact that we got more lore about like Apex. I I but then again, I don't know how that's gonna tie into like later stuff because like. Apex already like didn't they just you know go down with Mega Godzilla so like is that kind of obsolete to talk about that you know unless they somehow have a bigger role in like newer Godzilla X like the MonsterVerse movies I don't know but um the the I will say one of the most emotional parts about the um that I like that they did is like they show the war they kind of show you more of like what the world is like now that monsters have taken over and this is kind of like it's been integrated in society like they have like shelters in place there's like kaiju insurance which is questions that I. I ask all the time, like, you know, what if Godzilla crushes your, your house? You know, people, like, living in bunkers and stuff like that underground. And so I like that they kind of explored they explored that world a little bit. It was really, it was really, it was really cool. The, and the, even the scenes, and some of the more emotional scenes that I remember watching were, like, when she, when, like, the our main character, she's, like, having a panic attack because, like, she's having, like, flashbacks of, like, when she, like, there, like, there was a kaiju, like, warning. And then another scene that was, like, really emotional is, like, when Godzilla straights up just, like, like kills kids like like that's it like he was responsible for just them dying and that was just like wow that's dark you know but the 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 older storyline was like i think the peak of it and getting able to see like even some of the more original monsters you know i i remember like one of the hardest things about like with the monster verse was like seeing original monsters because you're like oh like i want my i want my rodan and baragon or whatever you know or the space amoeba so yeah, but then, like, I started falling in love with some of them. Like, the, the little ice artwork, the frost vark. That's, like, really cool design and really cool, like, idea. Like, oh, this thing has, like, it can, like, freeze stuff by, like, like sucking the air, the, the heat out of the air. I don't remember, but that was cool. Okay, Shin Godzilla, S tier. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, if I'm going based off, like, maybe statistics or maybe not even statistics, but, like, more nerdiness this moviness i might put shin at a at a but i put it at s because i remember it was like the first toho were back and i just like i was so upset that i did not get to see it in theaters and i remember they were showing it in theaters but i didn't have a car at the time you know i didn't have a car at the time and i i couldn't go see it and that was like really frustrating for me to not be able to go see it I mean, I finally was able to, like, watch it, you know, when they, when I got, like, the DVD and stuff like that. And I, re- I remember watching it dubbed. And it's, watching, say, so watching it dub and sub are, like, two different movies, usually. But, like, watching it dub is, like, the funniest thing ever because, like, Funimation did it. So, you know, you have, you have like, Vegeta, like, voicing, like, the Prime Minister or something like that or, 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 or Natsu voicing, you know, these political figures. Like, it's it's just so funny, you know. It's like, Godzilla's evolving. What? You know, it, it's it's very, and it's very filmed, like, anime-like because, you know, the director did Evil Angelic, whatever that. I always have a hard time pronouncing that. You know, you know what I'm talking about. So, like, that, it, it just was interesting. But, like, out of all the Godzillas, it's one of, like, I think the most creative Godzillas they've taken with. One of the most destructive Godzillas. It's just a wild design. There's some scenes that are so beautiful, like, when Godzilla's, like, destroying the city with his, like, heat ray beam. That's, like, one of the most, like, intense scenes I've, I've ever seen of, like, Godzilla, like, destruction and, like, the music that chore- choreog- for sure that, that, that correlates with it. It is just, like, that scene alone, like, when he opens his mouth, the purple beam comes out. It is, like, literally a masterpiece of cinema for that the rest of the movie is kind of boring but (laughs) because it's all political stuff but if you if you know the reason why the movie was made like it was made because of a political agenda of like there were some issues in japan of like you know does that like you know just they weren't handling the government wasn't handling the disasters just right you get more appreciation of like why the movie was made the way it did and for me, that's what makes the movie, like, much better, is when you know the history of behind why Shin Godzilla was, like, pretty much made. So, now let's get to a point where, I, where I'm i very excited to talk about. The anime trilogy, 
because I've watched these twice now. First time I watched it, I was like, I was, I don't remember any of it because I fell asleep. Second time I watched it, I was like, okay, I have notes. <laughs> so, Planet of the Monsters, B. I'm putting Planet of the Monsters at B because I liked that. Here's the thing when it comes to Godzilla, I think, you know, you can get to, you, some people get stuck in the pattern of like, we should have Godzilla be like, you know, um, be like old school Godzilla. Like, there's a lot of argument. Like, I'm even, even seeing a lot of videos nowadays of, like, the Godzilla fandom's toxic or whatever. I don't, I haven't clicked any of those videos. But, like, I get what where people are coming from. If, you, if, I, if I did click that video of, like, there's different people, like, I like the serious Godzilla. I like the goofy Godzilla. I like this. And for me, I liked just Godzilla. And I like seeing different takes on Godzilla. It's very interesting. Like, one of my most interesting things about Godzilla is like the different ways they try to kill him. Whether it's a volcano, a black hole, they freeze him. They, you know, submerge him underwater and let the pressure of the ocean try to kill him. It's very interesting. Eventually, they might run around, run out of ways. But for this one, it was like a crazy way of killing him. Like they had, they went more. It's very interesting when they try to go the scientific route. But seeing like Godzilla, like basically, he's a monster that takes over this planet, and then people have to leave. You know, that's like, and and then they try to come back to take it back from Godzilla. It was very Attack on Titan like, and I think I think it's the reason why in the beginning I wasn't a huge fan of it because it's like, man, this feels like Attack on Titan. I feel like you're just copying Attack on Titan, which I also learned through the, the DVD trailer. I mean, through the trailer, Toho actually made the live action Attack on Titan, which is interesting. Anyways, the characters in it, I hated the main character, Haru. He was so annoying. He was so like, I just hate Godzilla to be hating on Godzilla. Like he's a monster who took everything from me. But like at the end of the day, it's like Godzilla doesn't like have personal vendettas, right? Um, you learned this in the third one that like, they ask like are you scared of Godzilla and he's like no like Godzilla's like a hurricane or like the weather like I'm like well yes I am scared of it but like I'm not mad at it you know what I mean it's a force he is a force of nature and the thing about when you come to the trilogies you have to kind of look at the overall trajectory of the trilogies and when I when I give you when I if you put these all in like one movie then I might move it up the list but individually they're different but like you have to look at it as a whole so, but as this one, it was an interesting opening. I'll give it a solid B because of that. You know, like there, but the, the, cause what I like about the three movies is there is progression of the characters. They're not just like one hit note because like, we're going to go move to, um, sit on the edge of battle. I put that one at A. I thoroughly was like, oh, I don't remember much of this movie, but watching it, this is where you start seeing Haru questioning his, like his ideology of like, oh man, I hated this creature, but like. The whole thing about this is like, so Meg Godzilla City, which is already crazy to begin with, right? People didn't really like that, I remember. But like, I think it's cool that Meg Godzilla was a city. He became a city. That is so cool. Um, and then the the aliens there, the Belidio Sudians or whatever, their whole thing is like, we need to become machines, become monsters in order to defeat monsters. And so that begs Haru the question of like what am I becoming if I become so vengeful that I want to kill this force of nature right am I becoming a monster so he starts really questioning his like ideals because of that and I found that so like that that whole duality argument in his brain to be very, very complex and also there was so much action in this you know like them trying to lure Godzilla into this trap you know I mean they do that in the first movie but like also like having to like he has a chance i have a chance to kill godzilla but what does it mean if i give up my humanity just to kill this force of nature right overall great just a great like theme in general you know and the music which is really dope uh planet either i'm, <laughs> I'm giving this see planet so oh, planet planet eater what i did like about it is it wraps things up nicely but it was a little more of the slower ones you know i remember being like oh, this is kind of long and more mathematical you know I mean, it, it was cool and all, and it like I said, it does wrap up everything nicely. Uh, it's interesting to see though that King Ghidorah is like a, um, it's like from a different dimension, like who doesn't technically exist in there. Like it's and Mothra kind of makes a cameo vaguely, but it wraps it up nicely at the end where like they decide to kind of leave Godzilla alone and live amongst the um, the Mothra bug people, you know, and like I guess just yeah. And there's a part, though, where, like, one one aspect of this movie I did enjoy was the fact that they make the argument of, like, as humankind progresses, they are doomed to destroy themselves. And so that's something that, like, our main characters reminded at the end when they start, like, 
one of the scientists guy was like, I'm going to, like, get this mech back in order so we can, like, progress through society. And then he has, like, this, like, vision of, like, you know, like, all the horror. It, it's like it's like that's when Oppenheimer realized, oh, I made the atomic bomb and, like, all the horrors that come with it. You know, it's, like, definitely, like, Jurassic Park, like, just because your scientists could, should, should they have, right? You know, so it definitely became that. And so he pretty much decides to just make the sacrifice of, like, I cannot let these people here progress further. They, they would be much better if they lived a simpler life without progressing through society because he doesn't want the world to get destroyed again. He kind of like does that. And I found that was a, a nice way to just wrap things up, like his whole arching thing. So overall, I would give the anime trilogy like a maybe a B plus, A minus overall. Like it, it actually wasn't as bad as I remembered it. You know, you just have to watch it as a whole. You know, and that's sometimes the hardest thing to do. But down to singular point, I'm giving singular point an A. I enjoyed seeing a point. I've watched it twice now. I remember it was it was fun to watch. Like it was fun to see the little things. You know, I was not a very huge fan of like the Jet Jaguar in it, but like over time he's grown on me. You know, I I for the most part I love the characters. Now, overall, it was a confusing anime. I mean, they're getting into like different dimensions and like all these like mathematical science equations. Did not understand that one bit. I've had people on Reddit explain it to me. You know, I just, I just don't get it. But like at the same, at the end of the day, it's like monsters. That's like, like I love Rodan's, the Rodan's, you know, with all these like little Easter eggs, you know, I even think there's a draw a monster Easter egg kind of there, you know, and then Godzilla in this one was like, he was like a, he was like basically a different dimensional intelligent eight figure being like the Godzilla we see was just a shadow. And also I want to talk about this guy, Haburu, who's I consider the strongest human in Godzilla canon. This man literally, like, helped launch Jet Jaguar off a truck that was, like, falling down from the air. Like, how do you... How does that work? Like, he helped launch it with his own body. And then he's, like... The, I want to say the drop that they fall off is, like, at least over 100 feet. How does he survive that? Like, I, it's just... That's crazy. And he's still alive. He's, like... This man, definitely the strongest... One of the strongest... Godzilla characters ever maybe even anime definitely my one of my favorite himbos like Jesus look at this man also no one talked about this woman's design as much either like I love this I love everything that's going on here but I enjoyed Signal Point it wasn't the best it wasn't the worst but the things I like about it anyways so minus one yeah we're just gonna uh actually the new category the goat so minus one is it the greatest Godzilla movie of all time I mean there are a lot of other ones that like I really like but just everything that this movie represents like just to make a remake of the first movie or like a reboot you know I don't know like the, everything about this when I watched it and I, I didn't know what to expect whenever I was going to need to watch this movie because like up until this point of the Godzilla career you know, we were very used to, like, human plot sucks. Like, we're not going to get that, right? We're just going to get big monster. That's all. We, and that's, for me, that's all I cared about. But I didn't know how, like, good I could have it until I watched this movie. I might consider Minus One the best movie I've ever seen. You know, it might be, like, Minus One, Oppenheimer, Barbie, Clerks, and then, like, Heavyweights. But, like, this, it was just, I would, and I remember I went with my entire family like we i took them and like they normally don't watch god they know they, they were there because like i invited them right but like, i remember like seeing like turning over and like i could see them like they're on the edge of their seats just the amount of like reactions i remember hearing in the theater even this just like this dead silence i i remember the last time i saw it you know i like towards the end obviously like whenever like uh uh our main character, Kyochi, you know, our main character, like, revisited with his love interest there, you know. I remember, like, there was a woman behind me, literally all the way back. She was sobbing. She, like, like, I, I, I felt it. Like, she just, like, it poured out of her. And, like, same with me. Like, the amount of times, like, I, like, just, I could not contain myself in this movie. It's, it wasn't just a good Godzilla movie. It was a good movie. Just, like, in general. And, like, the amount of good movies we got, like, last year, like, what was it? Oppenheimer Barbie, you know, The Iron Claw, right? It was such a, like, one of the few movies that, like, <laughs> broke me was like that one and definitely the iron claw but like it was just like i saw that movie i want to say six times i think i saw it twice in the black and white version the minus color version and then like 
the four other times I saw it in like just like regular and I saw it with everybody. I, I encourage so many people just to go see this movie. I can't believe this movie won an Oscar. I mean it won it for like what the, the, the designs and stuff like the special effects. I mean it deserved more than that, honestly. And the fact that we got like Danny DeVito and Arno Godzilla <laughs> announcing it was just so funny. But oh my god, like I mean, out of all the Godzilla movies of like I, I put on I mean I that's the thing about Godzilla. Godzilla's for, so versatile. What like if I'm at a party and I just want my friends to goof off, you know, I'm gonna put on Godzilla versus Megalon. That's what I'm gonna put on. But if I want like I'm showing someone a Godzilla movie for the first time, I might hit them with like a I don't know, like a like I might hit them with this one. You know, if I want to make somebody cry, I like to it depends, but like this movie was just so in, absolutely incredible. You know, I just I this all that's about it. It was such a good movie. Like I haven't watched it dub yet. But maybe we'll get there soon. <laughs> it hurt the dub's good, actually. But just... Also, it, it really told theaters that, like, hey, you know, we can show movies that are not in English, you know? Like, just the response. It just made me so happy as a Godzilla fan that after, like, 70 years, this man's still going. The G-Man's still going. And I can't wait till I'm the 100th anniversary and that's on my, when I'm watching my last Godzilla movie because I'm, I'm going to die that day in the theater when that happens. But here's to the next era. Minus one was great. Anyways, there's a lot to say. Appreciate the watch. Peace out.